Hello, I'm Richard Murphy, and I want to talk about something that Rishi Sunak said in his Conservative Party conference speech this year. What he said was that the government has a sacred duty to balance its books. Well, it's an interesting idea. I'm not sure what god he is worshipping who thinks that balancing a set of books in a set of government accounts is more important than anything else in life. Certainly, it's not in any form of holy, religious or other work that I've ever read that this is said to be the case. So he has a weird view of the term sacred for a start. He's also plain straightforwardly wrong. Partly because he doesn't seem to understand what balancing the books is. I want to tell you about how much money he's borrowed this year. Now, it's a very simple number, it's actually nothing. I was literally, although we have run a substantial deficit since April 2020, and we're recording this in October 2020, the deficit's well over 170 billion by now in that period because of the coronavirus crisis. And despite the fact that during that period, according to the data I have from the debt management office who run the government's borrowing, they have issued debt of around 220 billion pounds. The government has in fact bought back 246 billion pounds of gilts during that period. The gilts are the debt that the government issues. And so as a result, in fact, in net terms, government borrowing has fallen since April 2020 because you can't owe yourself money. The government literally cannot owe itself money that it already owns. And therefore, Actually, what Rishi Sunak said makes no sense. The gilts that have been repurchased are owned by the Bank of England, which is owned by the government, and therefore debt has actually fallen. So why is he making a claim that we have a sacred duty to balance the books when he's already doing so? There's only one possible interpretation for that claim, and that is that it is politics. I'm hoping it isn't ignorance, by the way. I'm dismissing that possi possibility. I'm presuming that Rishi Sunak does know something about the economy he's meant to be running. So what are the politics behind this claim? Well, the politics are straightforward. What he is saying is that he wants to shrink the size of the state. And we know that that is what Boris Johnson has also said is his, his view, a precondition of the building back better as he puts it, after the coronavirus crisis. He doesn't like the degree to which the state has interfered in the economy. And let's be honest, he's far from alone in that. Most of us are not enjoying the degree to which the state has had to intervene in the economy and impose upon our lives in recent months. But what he's saying is the state is also going to pull back economically. Now, this is profoundly worrying because we can debate the precise numbers but the government is already saying it's preparing for at least 4 million unemployed people after November 2020, when the furlough scheme comes to an end. I have suggested that the unemployment figure could be somewhat higher than that. I actually think it's going to be in excess of 5 million people because of the number of people who are still on furlough and because of the number of people who are simply going to drop out of the employment market for the time being, but who are nonetheless unemployed as a result. And as a consequence, there are going to be vast numbers of people who are going to be dependent upon the state for their income. How is the government going to pull back from the economy and support these people? And how are we in that situation going to see any form of economic recovery? Well, the only explanation I can offer is one ideological, that is, that Rishi Sunak and Boris Johnson so hate the state that they want to pull back come what may, and two, that they don't understand something fundamental which differentiates the state from every other type of economic unit, whether that be a person, whether that be a family, whether that be a company. Whether you're a person, a family or a company, if you cut your spending and you have a fixed income, you're better off. If you're a government and you cut your spending, your income goes down. The reason why is that at government level, and remember there are 65 million of us in the UK, near enough, if you cut spending, then you are cutting somebody else's income because the spending by the government goes into one person's pocket and then goes on and becomes another person's income. Now the evidence 
when we are in an economic downturn, it's very strong, that putting money into people's pockets that they can spend actually has what is called a multiplier effect. In other words, it increases people's confidence about spending. So if you support one person and they spend some more, the recipient feels better and so spends more of their income, and on and on. So in fact, government spending doesn't just have a benefit of one times what it spends, but has a multiplier effect of several times on some occasions, depending what you spend the money on. So what we're seeing is the government saying it's going to cut, and the multiplier effect works in reverse as well. So if you cut too much, you actually create fear. And if you cut too much, that fear means that the recipients of state support are so worried that they've got so little, they actually try to save even out of the little they've got. And other people are so frightened about falling into the state system, which is so tough on them, that they will save rather than take the risk of ending up impecunious. So the government actually has the power when we're in a downturn, and we are going to have a downturn of a scale that nobody alive can remember beforehand. The government has the power to correct for that by spending. But Rishi Sunak is committing to saying we're not going to borrow. Boris Johnson is saying we're not going to spend into the economy because the private sector's got to do the job. And the private sector won't have the confidence to do that and Rishi Sunak won't let the money go to do that. And as a consequence, this sacred duty to balance the books is actually going to consign all of us to some sort of economic downturn of a scale we've never before witnessed. It's a totally mistaken economic philosophy that I sincerely hope someone soon reminds them is profoundly wrong. I'm Richard Murphy. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this video series on YouTube if you're interested. Also look for us on Facebook. I am on Twitter, at Richard J. Murphy. And at the same time, look at my blog, Tax Research UK, where you can find much more on these themes. And I'll see you again soon.